So Chapel Roan was interviewed by The Guardian, and one quote in particular rubbed a lot of people the wrong way after it blew up on Twitter. Now, if you don't know who Chapel Roan is, she is a massive pop star who blew up this year, and she's obviously incredibly talented, but people like her also because of how relatable she is. She often talks about her struggles with mental health, depression, anxiety, and she also was raised in an evangelical household but now openly identifies as queer, and she's also adopted the aesthetic of drag queens and features them prominently at her shows. So her story resonates with a lot of people who feel like they've always been outcasted. Now, given her background and her identity, you would assume that she's a really political person, and she is, but because of this quote, people are assuming that maybe she's not so political. Maybe she's politically indifferent is how one person put it. So what did she say? Well, she gave her reasoning as to why she is not going to be endorsing Kamala Harris for president, unlike some of her peers in the entertainment industry. Here's the quote in particular that ruffled so many feathers. In a viral post from PopFlop, they share the quote where she says, I have so many issues with our government in every way. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressured to endorse someone. There's problems on both sides. That's the reasoning she gives as to why she's not going to be endorsing Kamala Harris. And of course, this pissed off a lot of liberals. For example, Olivia Giuliana responded saying, Pretty sure there's only one side painting drag queens out to be pedophiles and trying to outlaw gay marriage and trans people existing. Such a flop ass answer, the worst kind of political opinion, indifference. Now, Bradley Whitford chimed in saying, how do you feel about tens of thousands of pregnant rape victims forced to carry their rapist children to term? LGBTQ plus rights, the future of democracy, the future of the planet, anything. So needless to say, her comment there pissed off a lot of liberals, and I think that they took this as kind of an inadvertent endorsement of Donald Trump or an endorsement of Donald Trump in not so many words. But that's not necessarily what she's trying to say here. Now, I'll grant you that I don't like this false equivalence between Democrats and Republicans that some people draw, because while it's true that both sides are indeed bad, they're not equally bad. Like, I think that Republicans are actually ontologically evil and pose an existential threat to democracy and the planet. So, you know, even though I have many criticisms of Democrats, I think it's important to be nuanced and not make it seem as if they're equally bad when you're talking about the failure of both parties. But with that being said, that quote from Chapel Roan in a vacuum makes it seem like she's some oblivious or ignorant airhead who's not cognizant of the threat that the Republican Party poses to communities that she purports to care about. But that's not who she is at all. And I suspect that the account tried to use that quote to farm outrage on Twitter by not giving people the full story. But I mean, if you get the full context and you learn about her politics, you'll quickly realize that she is very much informed about politics, contrary to popular belief. And I'd argue that she's much more informed than the average American, which is the impression that you would get if you actually read the interview, which people did not do. For example, Kay Solomon, who interviewed her, explains, quote, for every UK tour ticket sold, one pound goes to LGBTQ plus rights charity Kaleidoscope Trust, and at the merch stand in Manchester, there are signed risograph prints selling for 100 pounds, with proceeds going towards aid for Palestine. Wearing charity shop costumes, fans Kenza and Freya say they admire Roan's values. Quote, she's probably the only artist that's really standing up for things that no one else is wanting to talk about. Of the prince, Roan says very carefully, it's just my duty to help send resources to a community that is absolutely being destroyed. And even though Kamala Harris used her deliriously goofy feminine nominon song in a campaign video, what we really need is a feminine nominon, and seemingly copied the design of an official Roan baseball cap, Roan hasn't endorsed her. And in June, while dressed as Lady Liberty, Roan told the crowd at Governor's Ball Festival in New York that she had declined an invitation to perform at a White House Pride event. Quote, we want liberty, justice, and freedom for all. When you do that, that's when I'll come. Now, here's the full quote that's being shared. I have so many issues with our government in every way, she says. There are so many things that I would want to change, so I don't feel pressure to endorse someone. There's problems on both sides. I encourage people to use your critical thinking skills, use your vote, vote small, vote for what's going on in your city. The change she wants to see in the U.S. this election year, she says instantly, is trans rights. They cannot have cis people making decisions for trans people people, period. So she is raising money for LGBTQ plus causes and people in Palestine facing a genocide. So you can't say that she's abandoning communities that she claims to care about by not making an explicit endorsement of Kamala Harris 
because she's putting her money where her mouth is. Now, you can argue that she should use her platform to endorse Kamala Harris for purposes of harm reduction. I think that would be a fair argument to make. But she's not endorsing Kamala Harris because of Kamala Harris's position on Gaza. And also, she implied that her number one issue is trans rights. And if you look at Kamala Harris's issues page on LGBTQ plus rights, it is embarrassingly vague. In fact, she doesn't even mention trans people a single time, aside from the T in the LGBTQI plus acronym. And when you have Republican-controlled states across the country cracking down on trans existence, you need more than a mere endorsement of the Equality Act. We need to know that you condemn these policies explicitly and have a specific plan to protect transgender rights that are under assault across the country. So Chapel Roan is either not satisfied with Kamala Harris's positions on issues that she cares about the most, or she finds them morally egregious, right? Maybe she just thinks that Kamala Harris isn't good enough on trans rights, even though she's better than Donald Trump, but that's a really low bar. But I mean, thinking that somebody should do more is a reasonable position if you're running for president, right? Or she just thinks that they're morally egregious, as is the case with Gaza. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's not voting for Kamala Harris. It just means that she doesn't think electoral politics is the best way for her to affect change as a pop star. And she would rather use her wealth to directly assist the communities that she cares about. Now, she's been pretty clear about this in the past. For example, Paige Skinner of HuffPost explains, quote, earlier this month in an interview with Rolling Stone, Rowan spoke further on why she declined the invite from the White House and said it was because of the U.S. government's support of Israel in the war in Gaza. She also shared that she considered going to the White House and reading poetry by Palestinian women in protest, but decided against it after speaking with her publicist. Quote, I had picked out some poems from Palestinian women, Roan said. I was trying to do it as tastefully as I could because all I wanted to do was yell. I had to find something that's tasteful and to the point and meaningful and not make it about me and how I feel. But she said she's not a fan of former President Donald Trump either, telling the outlet that it's not so black and white, that you hate one and you like the other, after her decision to not go to the White House was misunderstood by some fans as support for Trump. So to be clear, she's not a Trump supporter, even though she brought up both sides, even though she's not explicitly endorsing Harris. But I think that a lot of people saw that vague quote from her out of context and thought, oh, so she must be a Trump supporter or she's too much of a coward to endorse Kamala Harris or endorse against Donald Trump. But that's not really the situation here. It's much more nuanced, right? And in that Rolling Stone interview that was cited in the Huff Post, she talks about how she doesn't want to be a mouthpiece for an administration that's greenlighting a genocide in Gaza. I think that is a perfectly reasonable position. Now, the reason why she was dissuaded from going to the White House and reading Palestinian poems in protest is because her publicist told her specifically not that it would be a bad look for her, but that her security and the security of her family would be jeopardized if she did something like that. But I understand the position that she's in because I'm kind of in the same position, albeit to a much lesser degree, right? I also have a public platform and I desperately don't want Donald Trump to win. I want him to lose. And I'm going out of my way to encourage people to vote for Kamala Harris for purposes of harm reduction. But it's kind of hard to make the case to a Palestinian American viewer that I have, for example, that they should vote for the lesser of two evils when they've lost family and Gaza because of the weapons that this administration is giving to Israel, especially if Kamala Harris is saying, I'm not going to do anything to change the policies that Biden has implemented. We can wish cast what we want on Harris. We can hope that she does it. But the fact remains that she hasn't explicitly said, I will condition weapons to Israel. And that makes it difficult to sell it to people where this is their number one issue, where they have family that's been affected. Yes, Trump would be worse, but that's not the most persuasive argument if you've lost family in Gaza right? And Harris hasn't really given people who care about this issue much to work with. We're forced to kind of speculate and read between the lines every little thing that she says. It's why the uncommitted movement has come out and said explicitly they also can't endorse Kamala Harris like Chapel Rome because she's refused to condition weapons to Israel and she even broke her promise to meet with them after being open to do so before a rally in Michigan. But if you read their full statement, it's also not black and white. They're not endorsing Trump and they make it very clear that even though they're not endorsing Harris, they're opposing a Trump presidency, quote, whose agenda includes plans to accelerate the killing in Gaza while intensifying the suppression of anti-war organizing. And on top of that, they even say they don't recommend voting third party, especially in key swing states, because that could inadvertently deliver the presidency to Donald Trump. So the uncommitted movement is in a really weird position where they're simultaneously supporting Kamala Harris in a roundabout way while not explicitly endorsing her. 
And that might sound like a contradiction, but it's really not because they're just realizing that our electoral system is completely broken and they're kind of forced to do this tap dance to send a message to Harris while making it clear they don't support Trump and think that you should vote against Trump because of our broken political system. And that's kind of the position that it seems like Chapel Roan is in as well, where she's acknowledging the threat that Trump poses to communities that she cares about, but she can't morally bring herself to make an explicit endorsement of Harris, even though she may or may not acknowledge the value in voting for Harris for purposes of, of harm reduction. It's just it's not a black and white issue. And the people who try to make it a black and white issue are doing a disservice to a lot of people, right? We can be nuanced here. We're all grownups. And I agree with Uncommitted and Chapel Roan since I'm kind of in the same position. I am voting for Kamala Harris to stop Donald Trump from winning. And I'm acknowledging that a vote isn't automatically an endorsement of a politician in our broken political system. It's just one of the many tools that we can use to affect change. And in this case, as Olaimir Lauren puts it, we're just picking the person who's going to be easier to fight when it comes to the issues that we care about. I think that Harris will be easier to fight on the issues of Gaza, on LGBTQ plus rights. So I think that it's unfair for liberals to attack Chapel Roan for that quote. But to be fair to them, I think the, that the account that shared only a part of that quote didn't really give them enough context to accurately portray Chapel Roan's position. But I think this should be a lesson to all of us to read beyond the headlines because we could be unwittingly duped by rage bait, where actually communicating what somebody said isn't the goal here. The goal is engagement farming. So I think it's wrong to say that Chapel Roan is politically indifferent or some both side centrist who doesn't actually acknowledge the threat of fascism. No, I think that we can all see that she's actually really thoughtful and she's nuanced here. And this is complicated. We have a broken political system. And even if you disagree with her and think that she should use her platform to make an endorsement for purposes of, you know, harm reduction, that's reasonable. But just know that at least she's putting her money where her mouth is. At least she is donating to causes that help marginalized communities. And that's more than you can say about a lot of other pop stars. So, you know, credit where it's due. I think that what she's saying here, it's not necessarily going to be popular liberals are pissed off they'd probably still be pissed to be fair even if they got the full context but you've got to understand this is a moral red line for a lot of people and acknowledging that harris's refusal to say unequivocally that she's going to stop sending weapons to israel that's that's a tough sell for a lot of people so you've got to acknowledge that if Harris isn't going to meet them where they are, a lot of folks are going to be pissed off as well. So I feel like we kind of all need to do a better job of understanding where each other, you know, where we're coming from while acknowledging simultaneously that Trump is a threat and he must be defeated. But I'll leave that there.